Today's guest is Adam from Singapore. If you live in Singapore, then this episode could help you to convert to Islam. Converting to Islam is hard, right? Wrong. Adam explains how easy it really is. Learn the four reasons why Chinese Singaporeans find it hard to become Muslim. Adam Fu converted to Islam eight years ago in 2012. Adam is 46 years old and he has a Chinese background. We hope you enjoy his story. So uh, that was the uh, worst time of my life, but, but Alhamdulillah, because of, of Islam, I find that like, I'm, I'm able to accept this more easily. I'm telling myself, if without Islam, I don't know where, where am I going to go. And when I go there, I realize that um, God is uh, so ever merciful and, and he accepted a person who, who has totally no knowledge about all this and yet uh, Allah allowed me to step on the holy land and, and, and do whatever I'm supposed to do. The, a practicing Muslim is a person who is kind, who is uh, wise, who is helpful, who is always be very engaging. He likes to help you in whatever way. It's not only about religion. And then uh, every time my father would talk bad about Islam and I try to defend and I have a lot of argument with my, my father. And, and, and after that, when, when the relationship became very sour, then I talked to my teacher and my teacher scold me. My teacher said that, don't you know that actually Islam say you must love your parent, you must respect your parent, despite that they are against what you are doing. Welcome to the show, Adam. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Peace be upon you as well, Adam. Thanks for coming on to the show. I mean, inshallah, alhamdulillah. Mm. Okay, Adam, so, um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no problem, because I realize most of, most of them are from the from the, uh, from Australia and all other countries. I think Asia, am I the first one from Asia? <laughs> yes, you are, actually. You are the first from Asia. Allah Akbar, alhamdulillah. Yeah, most okay. of our listeners are from, uh, most of our people who I've interviewed are from uh, Australia, America, and UK. Right. Yeah. I did one from Germany uh, the other day. Right. Yeah, so right. this is a first for us. So you're, um, you have Chinese background? Yeah, correct. So, so I, was born, I was born in Malaysia in one of, the, of a small town called Tolo Intan uh, at a Perak state. So, um, so uh, I was brought up there in a very uh, Malay kampung environment whereby mostly are the Malay community. So, so I, I don't speak Chinese most of the time. I speak Malay. I speak uh, I speak Malay and, and and dialect at home. So my father speak Malay with me, and my mother will speak dialect with me. So, so basically, in terms of the the Mandarin part, we're not familiar. So, so uh, I know I know about Islam since childhood, and I'm a kind of person who like to explore about religion. So when I went to secondary school, I joined the Buddhist Association, the Christian Fellowship. And I also on 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 every every Friday I will join Christian Fellowship. Saturday I will join the the Buddhist Association, and uh, weekday I will join the Islamic class. So basically, I'm quite a roja. A roja means a very mixture kind of uh, of a of a of a background. So my my mother is so scared because uh, in Malaysia, uh, to the non-Muslim, the Islam is a taboo because. Because to them is that if you want to embrace Islam, you basically have to live with the with the, with the Malay community. You're not supposed to live with your own family because they will deem your family as a kafir. So you're not supposed to stay with them. So so and uh, uh, most of the time, non-Muslim are very scared of Islam because of the way they conduct and the way they 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 they, they, they execute the religion. So so that is a challenge lah. So so then after that, uh, when I come to Singapore in year 1993. Then after that, I worked in a bank. So then after that, on 1995, I met I met this girl. So I thought she's a Chinese, but actually she's a Malay. So mostly in, in Asia country, most of Malay are Muslim. So I didn't know about that because she, because she mixed most, mostly with the Chinese. So I thought she's a Chinese. So until until after I start to get to know about her, then I realized that she's a, she's a Malay. But anyway, it's just friend. So we are together for about three years. Then after that, then uh, then uh, start to like each other. Then after that, uh, I talk to my parent and my parent, my mother 
claim that uh, if you were to go with her, uh, she will commit suicide la, and then my father will disown me la, something. So I said, okay, then we hold on the relationship. But we say we just pretend to be friend, but end up end up we still we still uh, together, and 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 we try to find uh, for each other partners. <laughs> that is a very funny part. So then after that, then then but yet we are still together until year two zero, uh, until two zero one two. So then then uh, it was quite long the relationship and until two zero one two. Then my auntie, uh, Keon, uh, feel that it's not nice for you to be together with the same girl, all the while. Then uh, you should plan. Uh. Then after that, I I told my father. My father said, why 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 you took so long to to tell me about this? Then my father said, you quickly get married lah. So so that's where uh I can still remember is February two zero one two. I informed my dad on two zero and on March. I bring my 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 so called girlfriend, to, uh, which is my wife, uh, to see my father, and then after that, uh, on April I study Islam. Me, I embrace Islam. In September we married, so so the process is within the same year two zero one two. <laughs> so Alhamdulillah. So so that's a little bit about my journey, and then uh, and then after that uh, I study with one of the teacher at the. Uh, Darul Akam, which is a, a Muslim Convert Association of Singapore. I studied with this teacher, and he is a very, very, very humble old man. And and I studied with him, and he teached me a lot about about Islam, which actually um, gave me a totally different perspective about Islam, different from what I see in Malaysia, and 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 it attracts me a lot. But I promised my father that I will not practice Islam. So, so because of that promise, I actually um, never practiced Islam for one year. Despite that, I have embraced Islam. But, uh, but, but uh, after one year, then my teacher hold my hand because I, I'm, I'm a very diligent student because I attend his classes uh, five to six times a week. And all his classes I will attend regardless of whatever he teach. I don't know. So I will go and sit down and just listen to him because I find it's very attractive because it's really something that I've never heard before. And and it really very uh, uh, uplifting in terms of your mind and soul because because uh, it's something that uh, I feel is is new to me, so so I, I I keep on feel attracted to it and I will just keep on ongoing and ongoing without even realizing that actually I'm practically six days or five or six days a week with my teacher until my wife was saying why do you just shift and stay with your teacher <laughs> then. <laughs> That is how how silly I am that time, but 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 that that is how when 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 I feel that at that time I just don't understand why, but I just keep on going and on going and on going, and then after that uh, until until about a year, then uh, I studied with my teacher in a mosque, and then uh, and and you know as usual the student normally will get lesser and lesser and lesser and lesser then until the mosque actually shoot us away, because we 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 are. Uh, our student is only three, and then we have to use a big classroom. So we end up we study at the at the masjid, outside the the the, the prayer play, prayer area. So my teacher is very good. Despite only three of us, he will still continue teaching us. After that, after one year later, he hold my hand. He said, "Adam, when are you going to practice? When are you going to practice?" He asked me this question. I said, "I thought I practiced already." Then he said, "No, you have not start practicing because I don't pray, I don't fast." I don't do anything. I just attend class only. But I just know. Then I explained. I told my I told my teacher. I, I confess that I say I promised my father. Then my teacher said, "Oh, no problem. But you also promised to Allah. So so why don't why don't you do something?" So I I think think to myself. Okay. Anyway, I'm not staying with my father. So even I do also, my father won't know. So I just practice. It is very uh, subtle. The the whole process is very 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 subtle, and and without you understanding and knowing, and and, and I find this is a miracle to me. Uh, it's a miracle. Then after that, I I I actually I start praying is because I met one of the brother from Hong Kong. He actually uh, has been studying in the convert association for four years, without embracing Islam, but he has been practicing and he's a very diligent Muslim. But his uh, reason of not embracing Islam because he's waiting for his father to give consent, and then after that, I I feel so uh, shameful in front of him. I feel that why a person who has not uh, embraced Islam yet and has been praying, fasting, and doing all the necessary thing, and yet I as a Muslim for one year I did not do anything. 
So, so I, I feel that Allah has sent somebody to me to awaken me. And then after that, uh, he, he bring me there and he say, never my brother, you just follow me. Uh, you can just follow me. I, whatever I do, you just follow me. So I just follow him. Then he teach me Al-Fatiha and he teach me all, all those kind of things. Subhanallah, I think, I think it's, it's, it's a blessing. Then after that, uh, that is how my journey started about praying. And then after that, I still continue studying with my teacher. And then after that, on the, on the third year of, of, of embracing Islam, uh, I, uh, my teacher invited me for Umrah. So I told my teacher, I said that, no, I haven't really studied and know everything yet. Then my teacher said that by the time you know everything, you, you might not be here anymore. So I, so I think to myself, I said, oh yeah, because my teacher said that death doesn't count age. Because uh, it doesn't ever care whether you are young or you're old. Anytime you can go. So you don't regret by then. So whatever you can do, you just do within this lifetime. So I didn't think about it. I said, okay. And then after that, I, 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 I follow my teacher. I bring my wife and my mother-in-law together. We went to Omrah in, in 2015. And then after that, uh, it's, it's really another eye-opening. So when I reach, uh, when I reach uh, Majidul Haram, I, when I saw the Kaaba, I just don't understand why. I kept on crying and crying and crying. The tears kept on dropping. But I just don't understand why. Because I, I don't even know. I attended the course. But the course is so simple and it's so brief. I don't even know what, what, is, what to expect and what to do. I don't even know what to read. But my teacher say it is not about all this. Because you go with a heart. You go with a sincere heart. Clean heart. Open heart. Empty heart. Just go there and just... Just uh, go there with the sincerity to tell Allah that, Ya Allah, I'm here for you. That's all. The rest of the thing, you don't care, you don't bother, you don't have to go and, and know too much. Can I, so can I, I stop I've, you there um, and just ask, yes, sir, you mentioned yes, um, yes, doing Umrah, right. so a lot of our listeners right. um, probably don't understand right. what Umrah is. Oh, can you explain, Umrah is, explain uh, is, what that is? Right, right. Uh, Umrah is a minor pilgrim. A minor pilgrim, which actually it is uh, compared to Hajj. Hajj is, uh, is is the major pilgrim, and Umrah you can go any time uh, of, of of the of the year, uh, any time of the whole year. Compared to uh, Hajj is different. Hajj you can only go in the in the month of Hajj, which is the month of Zulhijjah. So 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 that that's that's it. Uh. So Umrah is a is a minor pilgrim. So I I went there for eleven days. So so five days to to Mecca and four days at uh, Medina. So, so that is also another eye-opening. So, so it, it helps me. And when I go there, I realize that um, God is uh, so ever merciful and, and he accepted a person who, who has totally no knowledge about all this. And yet uh, Allah allowed me to step on the Holy Land and, and do whatever I'm supposed to do because I have a lot of uh, friends that I met that that informed me that he said even though they managed to went there, but they, they, they just fall sick and they are unable to perform all the act of worship that is supposed to be done. So so it's a blessing to me. To me, it's a blessing. So so because of that, uh, after that, when I come back to Singapore, I get very gung-ho and I I feel that like like I want to do something for Islam. And you know that time, all the blood is all warm up and, and I just feel like I want to do something for Islam. And then after that, uh, I, I told my teacher and then my teacher was saying that, why don't you, you start up a group and do something about it? So, so I started a group, a group called Shautul. Uh, initially, I started out with in the mosque. So I called it a Shautul Hangjabat, which is the mosque name. But the mosque committee are not very happy with the way I do things because they find that uh, you are just a group of convert. What do you all know about Islam? And then, and then, and then uh, so, so I get very upset. So, so then after that, I told my teacher, my teacher said, it's okay, so just change name. So I changed the name to Shouter Muslim, which is uh, the Voices of Muslim. So, so our group of convert, actually, we learn about Islam and we try to spread the message through our own language, which is um, uh, Chinese. So, so, so after that, uh, I told my teacher, I said, that, then when I, where, where am I going to spread this message? So my teacher is very funny. He said, don't tell me, tell Allah. So I don't. So at that time, I'm. I get very puzzled. Why well, tell Allah? So my teacher said, "Of course, because he is the one who govern all this, not me." Then after that, I say, "Oh, okay." So I sit down, and then after that, after prayer, I tell Allah, "Ya Allah, uh, I would like to do something back to the community." So, so uh, what can I do? And then two days later, one of my friend, 
She's a French lady. She's a Muslim. She called me. She said, Adam, uh, Majid Sultan, which is the Singapore second biggest mosque in Singapore, are looking for volunteers for Ramadan. And they are looking for different uh, uh, people who can speak different dialect to, to spread the message of Islam. I said, MashaAllah, Allah has answered my call. I said, okay, okay, yes, please include my name. So she registered for me. So our, our duty initially is just to usher people. And then after that, during the ushering, people will start asking questions about, hey, what is this about? What is Ramadan is all about? Why, is, why the mosque is like that? What is the sound about the azan? What is azan is all about? So, so I start sharing. And then after that, I, I, and, and I learned a lot during, during this journey. I learned more about Islam from the non-Muslim, no more than I learned from classes because whatever question they ask is not all in the book sometimes. So, so hence, uh, my teacher is my, my, my guiding person who actually shared with me that uh, da'wah is not only about 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 what you learn is is about how you bring them closer to god so so that is how i learned da'wah uh, but i have my own shortcoming which i think uh, which i think i cannot control my own anger because i get very uh, easily get angered by small small issues until the extent that i've got to take medicine for that, uh, it's called anger management issue. So, so, so do you think your sorry? I'll ask you a question there about the right, anger right, management. Yes. Did you always right, have right. this in your life before you were yes, a Muslim? Yes, yes, yeah. Before I'm a Muslim, correct. So, so then what happened is that uh, when 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 I when I get upset with certain thing, so I will snap, and then after that I will start to scold people, and then I I will just. Uh, go a bit out of wire. So has, I, the, I, has the Islam done anything to help help the problem? Correct. Correct. So 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 this happened in 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 a, in a mosque in a Jumaah. I was sitting next to my teacher. It was a Friday, a Friday, and then after that, before the prayer, I sit down with my teacher, and then my teacher, I told my teacher about my problem. So my teacher hold my hand. He said that Adam, do you love Allah? I said, of course, I love Allah. Then my teacher said, how can you love Allah and yet you're angry with the Allah creation? So just because of this, this question that he asked me, I, it was like a thunder struck on my head and then I, I just don't know what to say and I'm questioning myself whether do I love Allah and, and because of this question, I cannot sleep, I cannot eat, I cannot, I feel like, like, like I'm so empty and then after that, and then after that, I come to realization that I need to do something. If I really want to do for Allah, I need to do something. So I asked my teacher, how do I go about? My teacher said, follow the Prophet. Because Allah say, if you love him, follow the Prophet. And Allah will forgive you. And Allah will bless you. So because of this, I say, then what should I do? Then my teacher said, follow what the Prophet do. If... If you if you angry, just go and take wudu. And then I told my teacher, I say, if I'm in the office, then how can I get on constantly taking wudu? Then take water, splash your splash on your face, and then walk away from the environment. If you're angry, you sit down. Otherwise, you can lie down if you want to. Do whatever you want. Just walk away from the situation and just practice this. And every time Kiran Estefar, Estefar means seeking Allah forgiveness. And 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 I practice this. Uh, from that day onwards, and Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, I'm, 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 I'm practically. I do not know why suddenly I, 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 I like no anger nowadays. Subhanallah, maybe Allah has been guiding. And then another thing is about, about. And then my teacher tell me, Adam, I give you two exercise to do. So I tell my teacher, what, what is it, Ustad? Then he tell me that, uh, number one, you have to smile. I, I because I don't know how to smile. That is about me, lah. So I don't know how to smile. So my teacher said, "Do you know that smile is a sadaqah, is a charity that the Prophet encouraged all Muslim to smile?" I said, "Oh, is it? Okay." So, but I told my teacher, "My smile is very ugly, but I don't know how to smile." My teacher said, "Just smile, just do, because because one day once you smile from your heart, people are able to feel it. You can do a fake smile first, <laughs> then after that you can follow with a sincere smile from your heart." And number two is lower down your voice because I, in the past I'm a very, uh, very arrogant kind of person, self-centered, and I, I thought that I know everything. But in actual fact, until I, I learned Islam, that I realized that 
that mashallah i actually don't know so many things about my own self don't don't have to talk about the world i i don't even know myself until i come to islam that i start to know about myself my true self and then after that and then uh and these are the two things that i've been practicing until now so i i realized that uh, my life has changed since then and then i realized that um and then my wife passed away 2 years ago 2018 it my wife passed away on february so uh, that was the uh, worst time of my life but, but alhamdulillah because of of islam i find that like i'm, I'm able to accept this more easily i'm telling myself if without islam i don't know where am i going to go so so allah has been ever merciful so um, so uh, he has been providing me with a lot of uh, encouragement a lot of my, uh, my teacher and a lot of my friends has been encouraging me and and tell me that uh just just do more prayer and all those and Allah will be with you so i've been doing that and alhamdulillah i find that like it's it is a lot lah so 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 that is about me and and my teacher say that when Allah takes something away from you especially those you love the most it shows that uh your level of iman is increasing so 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 you should be happy for that so i'm happy for that also because i realized that life has changed ever since so so that's a little bit about my story lah yeah. so okay. you have anything thank you adam <laughs> yeah um yeah your teacher sounds very wise right. and very spiritual yes can Correct. you can spiritual. you give some advice to our listeners right. out there um right, right. the ones that are not muslim yet they're thinking about becoming yes. muslim can you give them right, some right. advice on you know how to search for a teacher and how to find a teacher and how it will help them to learn about Islam Alhamdulillah I think I think the most important thing uh if you really in search of Islam I think first and foremost we must uh we do we have to learn from the person um uh you must first identify from the character because a person who practices Islam the character is different So like what my teacher say is is very simple is that if you are going to if you are sick you should go to a doctor if you are if you want to buy a meat you should go to a butcher so if you want to know about islam you go to a teacher a teacher who actually teaches the religion not not any teacher and 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 from there then after that uh, and and not all teachers are suitable for all so so sometimes spiritually spiritually if the teacher must have certain connection with you you can go to a lot but sometimes certain spiritual teacher were able to be the one Allah will choose for you so first look at the conduct of the person it sometimes it might not be a teacher it could be a practicing muslim who has been uh behaving well a practicing muslim is not only those who pray five times a day who actually uh, uh go for hajj and all those kind of thing a practicing muslim is a person who is kind who is uh wise who is helpful who is always uh be very uh engaging he like to help you in whatever way it's not only about religion and and this kind of practicing muslim normally they are able to tell you the truth about islam because there are a lot of people who claim that they are practicing from the behavior you will know that actually they are not practicing because if a person who practice islam normally they they will be more more uh engaging and more friendly and and more approachable and and normally they were able to try their very best to help you regardless whether it's religious matter or worldly matter because because uh, as a muslim uh, our duty is to is to use ourselves as a servant of god to to help the community the people surrounding us even not people also we will try our very best to help the surrounding we have to take care of the surrounding and take care of the people around us so so these are the the practices of islam so so if 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 anybody who would like to know about islam and and you saw a muslim then you look at the conduct so so a lot of people have been wearing the branding name of islam but sometimes they might not conduct themselves well so don't blame the 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 religion but sometimes uh, they are human are with with a lot of 
uh, weaknesses and shortcomings. So, so we, we have to look into that. Lah. So as same as you want to become a, a doctor, we look for the best doctor. If you want to be a teacher, you best for the best teacher. So if you want to be a, a Muslim, you look for the best Muslim or a good Muslim so that at least you learn from them. So from there, you are able to see light. Lah. And, and obviously, we must have an open heart to, to, to search because, because seeking for, for God, we must have an open heart. Yeah, I think that is very important because I've been volunteering in the mosque for four years. So I've seen a lot, a lot of a lot of people who is who is seeking for God. And 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 regardless of whether they believe or not, most of the time after after sharing with them, they 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 they, they believe and they understand. But it takes time for them to accept because because humans are with a lot of baggage with them. So we will always give them time to digest and, and we will help them along the way. Alhamdulillah. So so this is a little bit of sharing. So and okay. the experience that I Thanks have for encountered. That. Thanks for uh, that, Adam. Okay. Hope, so, it, hope it helps. Uh. Yeah. So you've got a lot of experience in Singapore now. And can you tell me what are some of the problems that mm-hmm. are, you know, some of the things that are stopping the Chinese Singaporeans mm-hmm. from converting mm-hmm. to Islam? Mm-hmm. So, so I think I think um, a few factors, a few factors. Uh, first and foremost is about um, the misconception that even until today, despite that, uh, so many campaigns, so many uh, uh, engagement has been done, and yet there are still people until today thinking that uh, Islam is only meant for the Malays, meant for the Arab, and meant for the Indian. He has never been a religion for others. And, and despite that, we have been sharing with them. In actual fact, if you look at China, the China Muslim there is actually uh, considered quite a large group of Muslim. So, 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 and then another thing about, about Chinese, they always think about is their wealth. They, and, and in Islam, in Islam if, if, if a Muslim pass away, their money can only be given to another Muslim. So to them is that if they were to embrace Islam, they fear of is that where their wealth going to go. So they always want to leave their wealth only to their own people, which is their non-Muslim family. So so but in Singapore context, we actually will always share with them uh, about about the distribution of wealth. So as as a revert or convert, whatever you call them, as long as you have embraced Islam, you don't have to worry so much because because uh like your CPF, all those, you can do your own nomination. The CPF means that the money that actually you deposited uh, after you work, then some of your fund uh, of your of your income will actually be deducted and actually saved by the government for you under the Central Provident Fund. So all this money can actually be nominated to your family members, which is uh, non-Muslim family members. And then your bank's account, if you want, you can actually have a joint with them, no problem. If you have a house, you can actually have another name, uh, join name with your, either your wife, your children, your spouse, or whoever. And then obviously in Singapore context, it's all go by civil law. It obviously will go back to your to your next of kin. So the only left about is either your bank's account, which is under your single name or whatever that is. That one you can actually do the distribution of wealth uh, via will. Uh, one third of it can be under will. Then two thirds will actually go to Baitul Mal. So we explain to them that uh, to allow them to understand that it doesn't mean that after you embrace Islam, all your money will go to only Muslim. So you can still provide for your family, which is a non-Muslim. If you love them so much, you can share with them about the beautiful faith that you have. We have entered, and then maybe Inshallah, may Allah open their heart. If they embrace Islam, Alhamdulillah, then you are able to distribute to them. But if not, then don't worry, you can still do it and provide some for them. So, so sometimes we, we will always have to explain to them in a very worldly and practical way so that at least they are able to understand until they embrace Islam. Otherwise, otherwise all this, uh, they, 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 they might not understand. Uh. So that is not, another thing is about faith. Uh. I think in, in Chinese community, they, they always look at faith. They always feel that like uh, Islam is the last thing they're going to think about. And they find Islam is so tough because uh, it's all about fasting, prayer. And they find that Muslim is crazy people. They pray five times a day and they fast in the whole month of Ramadan without drinking and eating. It's like a torturing kind of thing. And then, uh, so, and then I have to go until so far. I have to go until uh, Saudi Arabia to go and walk around the black box. 
these are a few things that they, they always be feeling that like uh, Muslim is all a group of crazy people so they, they don't even want to know about it. So every time I do da'wah in masjid, I will always share with them and most of the time after my sharing, they are all very happy and they feel that like they should have known Islam earlier so that all, all their worries will actually be eliminated. So, so I think at the end of the day, it's all about creating awareness and our approach towards them and also understanding a little bit about their background, their culture and, and, and also they, they bear a lot of their ancestor name and they, they always want to keep their ancestor name. So hence in Islam, we always tell them, don't worry, you can still keep your ancestor name. So as long as, uh, even if your name is beautiful, you can still keep your name. So you don't, you need not have a Muslim name if, uh, if, you, if you deem that you do not want to have one. Because some of them, they are very sensitive over changing name. So, so I say embracing Islam is about between your relationship with God. It's not so much of your name and not so much of all this. But having a Muslim name will help you in terms of spiritually, will help you to build up your spiritual part, the Islamic part of it. So so that is provided that you 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 want to lah. So so normally we will just share with them obviously no 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 enforcement upon them. Lah. Mm, so Okay. Thank you for sharing that Adam. Okay. And also right. you mentioned in Singapore they have the Darul Akam um convert mm-hmm association correct, um, correct yeah so can you explain um to right. uh, people out there and and and, right. and maybe target the uh, singaporean listeners that are listening right um you know how right. can this uh how can the darul akam help them to become muslim and also in their first years of islam okay um uh, currently i also volunteer at darul akam so Darul Akam is a place whereby, whereby it actually uh, welcome everybody, whether you're Muslim, non-Muslim, to come and study and know more about Islam. So normally they, they have all, all type of classes. They start off with a, with a knowing of Islam, which actually is only a two hour, two hour course. Actually is a, is every Saturday and Sunday morning. Uh, 10 to 12 if I'm not wrong so so what, what they conduct is that they will just share the basic about Islam the five pillars of Islam six articles of faith and, and these are the things that actually we have uh, all different kind of uh, uh, teachers, uh, professionals who, who, who is there to actually share and then uh, and then uh, it, it's go on uh, the whole year round, uh, every Saturday, Sunday, without, uh, we have never end any classes before. And then after they have uh, finished the Knowing Islam, normally we will have a lot of interaction with the participant to ask them about, about uh, what have they uh, gained from the sharing and then after that, whether they want to have their own inputs. So we'll gather all their concerns, gather all their, all their questions and then after that, we will, we will try to answer them and, and even uh, provide them books and all those materials is all for free. And then after they have completed the Knowing Islam, they want to know a little bit more about it, then we have all our basic course of Islam. And the basic course of Islam, uh, we have a, a book, it's like a textbook, actually we have a very brief introduction also about the five pillars and six articles of faith. And then assisting them into knowing uh, the whole uh, fundamental about Islam. Uh, theoretically and then after that after they have learned then after that we have a, a, a prayer class which is a solid class which actually teach them from the very basic about the essence of prayer what is the purpose of prayer and then uh, how to pray what are uh, what are the things that uh, for them to learn and read and what is essential for them to to read and uh, what is uh, just uh, uh, volunteer uh, optional for them to read. So, so we provide all these uh, basic things and then uh, obviously the practical about taking and then after that, then prayer together in a group. Lah. So, so these are the, the basic thing. After, after they have completed and they have already aware of, of, about how all this thing is being done, and then after that, if their heart is open and they feel that like, oh, they just feel like it's time for them and that they, they would like to embrace the faith. And then after that, we will arrange for them, for the date for them to, to embrace the faith. Lah. So obviously, it is up to the individual. And obviously, along the way, we will have a certain uh, engagement, like like grouping for them to, to know each other better. And we have activities for them to engage them. Lah. And, and this will help them to, to have this community for them to, to know each other better. And obviously, all converts will have a certain similarity in terms of challenges. 
So this will help them to, to give them a platform for them to, to share and also to, to gain knowledge and to see how are they going to resolve certain issues, especially the relationship with their families, especially parents. How do they, how do they uh, tackle their parents? Like my respect myself, I, I actually my it, it took my father four years to accept that I'm a practicing Muslim, because uh, when the first uh, after the first year on the second year I start to pray, and my father get very upset. My father said, actually I go against my promise with him that I'm not going to practice, and then after that, uh, but but. Uh, and then uh, every time my father would talk bad about Islam and I try to defend and I have a lot of argument with my, my father. And, and, and after that, when, when the relationship became very sour, then I talked to my teacher and my teacher scold me. My teacher said that, don't you know that actually Islam say you must love your parent, you must respect your parent, despite that they are against what you're doing as long as as long as uh, they don't ask you not to pray or to, to, to God, whatever thing, then you still have to uh, be, be, be kind to your parent, love your parent. And and then after that, my teacher teach me a few tactics about how to how to learn about psychology, uh, how to tackle my parent. And then my father is the teacher, and my father also know how to use psychology on me. And then we were, <laughs> we were always like like how how do I put it like like we were always uh, try to talk diplomatically. So so I, I and my father appreciate that lah. Because, uh, because uh, despite arguing, my father would keep on condemning, and I agree with him. I told him whatever you say is totally true. But that is what you see. But but in actual fact, uh, Islam is 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 not what you see. Islam is the truth. So I explain to him about Islam. Every time when he say about a certain thing, I always agree with him first. So I, I let him feel comfortable because human are like that. They just want to win. So we we'll let them win. But winning doesn't mean it's the truth. So I always share with him the truth. And Alhamdulillah, I think I think I, I love them more and I, I engage them more. And I and and because of that, I think when my mother passed away. Uh, that time, I, 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 I always pray for my mother and my father is uh, very touched and my father said that, yeah, please pray to your God and tell your God to, to protect your mom. <laughs> so, so I say, yeah, I've been praying. I pray for both of you. And, and, and on the fourth year, and my father is a very, uh, he, because he's very well known in the, my town. So, so he, he told me that I'm not supposed to tell anybody that I'm a Muslim because it's a disgrace to him. And then I think I think uh, four years ago when I go back to my hometown, he met with one of his friend. He's a Muslim friend. And then after that, suddenly I stand behind him. And then after that, uh, because I have a beard, so so my father actually don't allow me to have a beard. But I tell my father, it's okay. It, it doesn't bother me. So it shouldn't bother you. So then after that, uh, my father said, uh, okay, uh, do what you like. So then after that. Uh, I, I try to hide myself so that um, the friend don't see me. But my father pulled me out. He said, hey, this is my son. My son is a Muslim. So I, I, I was so happy at that moment. I, I was so happy and touched. So then after that, I, 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 I know that my father has accepted me as a Muslim. And this is, uh, to me, it's, it is Allah's will. Lah. So, so I'm still uh, slowly, slowly talking to my father about Islam. And hopefully that uh, one day, inshallah, may Allah accept him. Then maybe he can be a Muslim one day, inshallah. Pray for us, inshallah. Yeah, yeah I pray I pray that your father becomes Muslim. That would be, that would be great. Salah, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. So can you Sorry, tell me... emotional. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. So... Um, you know, while we're still talking about your father, um, can you go back to that time where you promised mm. him that you would right. um, not practice Islam? Correct, correct. And then mm. over a few years, and then you had to change that decision. Um, can you explain what you were going through then and how, how you felt with your emotions and everything? It is uh, one year. I, I have been, uh, for one whole year, I have not been doing anything. I just study and study with my teacher. And then after that, uh, that is after one year later, then my teacher uh, met me in the mosque. And then after that, my teacher hold my hand. And my teacher asked me, when are you going to start? Because even though I'm in a mosque, I follow them, but I don't know how to pray. So my teacher asked me, when are you going to start? So I told my teacher, I thought I start already. So my teacher said, no, you have not start. Then I said, that I'm thinking to myself, what are the things that I have not start? So then I realized that the thing that I have not start is my heart has not start. So that is something that I've been uh, pondering upon. 
and my teacher is telling me that he say that, but it's okay, my teacher. So my teacher is a very, you know, you know, if you were to go to other people, people will start scolding you. Hey, hello, you have been studying for one whole year, then you have not been doing anything. A normal person will just tell you off, but my teacher will always say, never mind, it's okay, take your time because it is between you and Allah. So, so I find that like, why is him not pushing me? If he were to push me, probably I will start earlier. I, I was thinking like that. But my teacher every time say that, if you're not ready, no point for me to push you, my teacher say. My duty is just to ask you. And I'm not asking you. I'm asking your inner self, which is your heart. When are you going to start? And this actually gives me a very funny kind of feeling. I don't know what he's talking about until I go back and sit down and ask myself, what is he talking about? Then from there, then I start to tell myself. Then I met with this Hong Kong brother. This is how all these things started. So I'm asking myself, what am I lacking? Then Allah sent this brother to me from Hong Kong to tell me that you have not been praying. So, so this is... Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so, for saying that. So, yeah. So this is how I I start to come to realization that I think I need to do something about myself because I have this part missing. So so th then after that then I start to practice lah. Then I start to really practice and and do what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. So yeah. I hope I answered that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did. You answered it very well. Right. So, so un unless you have any other things that you would like me to, to address and to help to, to maybe, maybe um, there are certain concerns that people have uh, misconception about uh, Islam that they, I, I, I'm able to address like for my respecters, uh, for, for myself, actually, sorry, for myself, actually, I, I, I also have the same sentiment that uh, actually Islam is what uh, is is only meant for certain certain ethnicity. Until I embrace Islam and actually open up my mind to actually accept that actually the beautiful part about about Islam is when I when when I, when I read uh, that the the, the 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 Prophet was uh, mentioning that he said that that Islam does not look at the skin, does not look at your. I that's why I find that like wow, so 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 what does Islam look at? So so then my teacher say Islam, Allah only look at your heart. Wow, that is that is that is something is very deep. When I first learn about that, I say wow, Allah is looking at my heart. So 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 regardless of what you have done, so it all from your heart. So if if you can do beautiful thing, everybody can see. But if your heart is not clean. Allah will not accept. So that is something that I, I've been trying to, to, to practice and learn, which actually I find that I'm still very far away, but inshallah ta'ala, hope, hopefully that Allah can accept. So so my teacher every time says, just do a little bit day by day and learn a little bit here and there. So so you don't need to be a scholar, but just need to be a human. So And this word actually uh, gives me a lot of encouragement because being a human is also a big challenge. <laughs> I mean, to me, like, to me, to me. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little bit about my sharing. Okay, Adam, thank you so much for sharing your story mm -hmm. and sharing your wisdom. And I really, I really like the way that you connected with your teacher. And your teacher is, sound, is very inspirational to me, the way he handled the situation with you. He was very patient right. and guided you along the way. And uh, it's... Uh, right. Sorry. It brings uh, brings happiness to my heart when I hear a story like that. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Okay, so we, we will have to um, close off now. For our listeners out there, those that are right. thinking about becoming Muslim, right? What would your right. Right. what would you give them as your final advice? My final advice is to to start to question yourself about what you want in life. Because, uh, because in actual fact, uh, I have not been asking this question until I embrace Islam. That I realized that that whatever I'm pursuing so far, 
that I thought that I, I'm achieving something, that I have been uh, trying to have a good life, have a good family, have a good, uh, have a good career, and all this kind of thing. But, but until I embrace Islam, I realized that I haven't even been a good person, a good human, a good, a good creation of God. Because until you know God, then you're able to know yourself. But the issue now is that um, we don't even know ourselves. Then how are we going to know God? So these are a question that is about chicken and egg thing that a lot of people have not been asking themselves. Because uh, I, I ever asked myself also about, about where am I coming from and where am I going later? Because, because uh, people think that biologically you're actually coming from your mother's womb. Yes, that is. Uh, but, but, but how do we come about? So, so these are the few things that... Um, I've been also asking myself, pondering upon, and and whether whether after I, I I go, where do I go? So so until I come to Islam, Islam answer all this for me. It helps me to understand that I have a place to go after this. It's not to say that after I die, I will just I will just disappear or or, or just go with the wind. But actually, I'm going back to somewhere, which is where I come from, because. Because Islam actually teaches me where I'm origin from, which is actually from 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 the heavenly kingdom with the with, with the Creator Himself, and yet uh, I have a place to go back to, which is to go back to the Creator Himself. So so it gives me a sense of belonging, and it also helps me to to understand that actually life is is so many things in life that we can do. Uh, and 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 as a Muslim, we actually uh, has a lot of responsibility. That's why that's why we need to be kind to ourselves, kind to our environment, because that in order to 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 even even if we want to go to university, you need to get a PhD, and we work so hard just to get that PhD, or what to 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 get that piece of paper. Same goes as a Muslim, we try our very best in order to earn the 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 thing called paradise. So, so that is the reason why in Islam is 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 very simple. It's just to acknowledge the Creator and practice what the Creator has actually uh, commanded and advised us to do. And then after that, just try our very best because uh, God don't demand us so much except that we are truthful to ourselves and be kind to ourselves and 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 be and and just to do what we are supposed to do in this world so that we can we can earn His beautiful kingdom in heaven that, 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 that's about it so 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 these are a great uh, encouragement for me to be a muslim because uh, because uh, being a muslim is, is is god chose us to be a muslim he, he he has chosen us to be guided to guide us so so to me we must have done something good in this life that allah has chosen us to be to be his servant to serve and to able to be a guided person rather than us uh, thinking that we, we, we have achieved and do so much, but in actual fact, we have not done enough or done the rightful thing. So Islam is a guiding principle of, of bringing us back to our own self, origin self, and knowing ourself, who we are. It's not so much about, it's not, a, not so much about our title, it's not so much of our achievement in this world, but it is about who we really are. Because if we can have a big house, we can have a big car, we can have a, a beautiful wife, we can have a we can have a, a, a title of a CEO or whatever position. But if we can't even know who we are, so I think it's very sad. So Islam brings us to reality and bring us to realization that we are we are a creation of God. We are human, and we have a responsibility to fulfill. And our role here is just to fulfill our responsibility. As a as a human, as a servant of God, so that we 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 are able to go back to Him with that title, uh, uh, called the servant of God. I mean, uh, this is this is a little bit about my sharing, lah. <laughs> Hopefully, hope it helps and and hope it encourage people to to able to know, understand, and come to realization, to acknowledge our own self as a human. So so that's that's about me knowing about Islam. Okay, Adam. Thank you so much for sharing that. Alhamdulillah. And thank Hope you for coming on the show. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah, I, I thank you, you for allowing me to speak. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're very welcome. Yeah. You're very welcome. So may the peace and the blessings of God be upon you. Amen. And also Ameen. onto Ameen. all our listeners out there.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Thank you so much, brother. Alhamdulillah.